Hello everyone. Today we are continuing our Dino Park development and I had an idea but let me go ahead and get this started. As usual we're gonna make a copy of our project so that anyone who's interested can follow along and see all the changes. Maybe try making some changes of their own. But here's my idea. Last time I realized these dinosaurs are ending up doing basically the same thing. The only difference between the T-Rex and the Triceratops is that right now the Triceratops can run away from a fight. Uh, the T-Rex can start a fight. Right? We can look for an opponent there. And they have different costumes. But all this other stuff, like when I receive screen.show, when the sprite is clicked, when I receive save name, all of that logic is the same between the T-Rex and the Triceratops, and we're going to be adding more dinos. If I added a Gallimimus, I don't want to have to copy all of these blocks just to add a new, basically to add a new costume, right? The, the Gallimimus will have a different picture. Everything else is going to be the same. So I'm thinking the project today is to combine the logic for these sprites and have a generic sprite called Dinosaur or Dino that has all of the behavior which we control with a type variable. So we're going to have a type that's equal to T-Rex and if it's a T-Rex then it's going to have certain things like starting a fight that it can do but if the type is Triceratops it'll have a different set of things that it can do but most of the things are going to be the same. And in fact, I wanted to make Triceratops be able to start a fight. And really, T-Rex should be able to run away from a fight. So let's do that today. I think that's going to be a good project. It's not going to be too crazy. Um, let's get started. I'm going to pick the T-Rex as the kind of main dinosaur because we've already done all the stuff for battling on the T-Rex. So... Let us get rid of this comment. We've saved our project. Um, first step, let's copy over this costume. So to do that, we've got Triceratops and Triceratops selected. I'm just going to drag that over to the T-Rex. And then drag this one over to the T-Rex. Like that. Ha, look at that, it set that as the default costume. I, I was confused for a second. I was like, did I just click on the Triceratops again? So let's go over here. We've got T-Rex, T-Rex selected. Triceratops, Triceratops selected. Uh, we're going to rename this sprite Dino. That is now our Dino sprite. And we're going to create a variable for this sprite only because each dino could have a different type. We're going to call create a variable called my.type for this sprite only. And my is going to be my namespace for everything about this specific instance or clone of a dino. So I'm actually going to rename name rename that to my.name. And my works well for some things. It's not going to work for everything. Uh, let's see. How about my dot status? That's that's pretty good. My dot status. My dot water. Oh, see now the looking for food. That's a behavior we're going to have to copy. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop with the renaming because. Ooh, yeah, I might have messed up just now probably should wait until after we combine to rename. Okay, so for instance, let's look at this wandering. We have food consumption. Yeah. Let's let's split these apart. We've got food consumption, we've got looking for food, we've got feeding. We don't want to copy fighting, but let's go ahead and copy this over. Let's drag that over to our dino sprite, which I still think of as the T-Rex. Um, wandering, let's copy that over. Boom. 
running away. Let's copy that over. Okay, now we've got some organization to do. Oh boy, this is getting complicated. So here's wandering with a random transition to hunting. And over here we have wandering with food consumption and some other stuff. So let's put that in there for now. And then, okay, so, it, oh, here we go. This is a great example. If food less than 30, set status to looking for food or set status to hunting, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna pretty much use that wandering block now. And to choose between these two, oh, and see, this is why I should have waited to rename because now it's status. That should be my dot status because, yeah, I shouldn't have renamed it before combining. That was silly. Set my status to looking for food if um, let's put that in there. Let's put that over here. So for now, we're still just gonna have these two types, but we're gonna say if my type is Triceratops, I like that, I can say my type, and that is actually the name of the variable. If my type equals Triceratops, then when we're hungry, we go to looking for food. If it's not Triceratops, we go to hunting. That's beautiful, that, that's a really nice change to make. So now the T-Rex hunts and the, the Triceratops looks for food. So let's put looking for food and feeding. Oh man, I have to change all of these. This is a trick I just learned. You can right click on a variable and change it right here. So food, food, my status, my status, status. We want that to be my status status this one oh that one you have to click on ah my status and after i'm done with this i'm going to quickly read through it to make sure i didn't miss something or choose the wrong thing in a drop down i want to make sure we're not introducing a bunch of bugs so we've combined oh and then there's running away okay let's go ahead and update that that should be my status. If my status is running away, set my status to wandering. And I want to drag that down near the bottom because it kind of comes after, I wonder if there's a faster way to do this, it kind of comes after the fighting because the way I was thinking of it, you look for a fight and then you either start a fight or you run away. So the state machine kind of should reflect that. So you either start fighting or you're running away. Perfect, and look at that. Now our T-Rex, sorry, our dino, which could be a T-Rex or a Triceratops, knows how to run away. Um, okay, let's move some of these other blocks out of the way and see. First of all, did I did I copy over any blocks that I forgot to integrate here? Let's look, make sure nothing's hiding underneath. Good, that looks good. So we've got, if we're selected, update globals, and that was to synchronize the info screen. Um, if my status is wandering, we're gonna eat some food. I can rename this now. Whoops, oh, I have to rename that over here. We're gonna call that my food it is my food if my status is wandering change my food if my food's less than 30 then look at our type if we're triceratops then we are looking for food if we're a t-rex then we're hunting that's good now let's handle looking for food if we're looking for food then if we touch the herbivore feeder, then we're feeding. Otherwise, go towards the herbivore feeder. That's something that's gonna have to change later because I think we do wanna have carnivore feeders because a lot of people will not mix the types. So they'll have carnivores by themselves. 
uh, or with another group of compatible carnivores, so they need a feeder. Okay, if my status is feeding, change my food. When we get full, go back to wandering. If my status is hunting, look for a battle. If we find an opponent, then we're fighting. Otherwise, eventually we just start wandering again, we give up. Else, we're wandering. So that's if we did not find an opponent. Either if, either if we're not, wait, how does this work? If, if we find an opponent, do that, what's this connected? Oh, if battle active equals zero. So if there's already a battle going, then we're in this else, and we just, we, we can't, we don't want to handle multiple battles right now. So that's good. Um, ooh, glide four seconds to Triceratops. Okay, so that's going to eventually have to change when we add more types, but right now it's okay because only the T-Rex is ever in this hunting, hunting state. So, oh, here's something else real quick. Save X and save Y. I realized we already have that because if we are the attacker then save x save y should be the same as attacker x attacker y so we actually don't need these variables oh whoa whoa here let me take that out it's a little confusing to edit code and scratch I have to say so check this out instead of saving x we're gonna do this we're going to say glide to battle defender X and battle defender Y and then glide back to battle attacker X and attacker Y. So, oh, look at that. When I dropped that in, it kicked out the variable that was there. That's where those come from. Look, if I move this over, oh my gosh, this is a long block of code. We're going to have to do something about that. If I move that over, See that? The variable that I replaced got kicked out. And it just hides underneath your code block. That's that's interesting. Anyway, um, copy. Now, if we are the... Oh, I didn't mean to click it. If we're the attacker, we glide to the defender and then back to attacker. Otherwise, we glide to attacker and back to defender. So Defender X and Defender Y. See, we got rid of Save X, Save Y. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those because I don't want to clutter up our variables with things that aren't actually used anymore. And look at that. There's the old status variable, which we got came in when we copied it from the Triceratops. Let's see. Selected, I'm going to call my dot selected. Okay, so now we can quickly see what um, what variables belong to what because of our namespacing. So all of these variables are for the battle. They're shared variables that the, the dinos involved in battling can access. Then we've got our hatchery variables, which right now there's only one, but there's definitely going to be more later, I think. Info, these are the things that show up on the info screen my shows the variables that are for this specific clone or this specific dino you could think of it as new name that doesn't have a namespace that that kind of predates it this is something i was experimenting with and i accidentally was editing my part nine that's going to come in the next episode this the y list or the sprite list um, the plan is to make the animation a little better and so we're going to do some uh, Z layer ordering so that dinos that are in front will appear on the top layer. That way when they're walking, like if this guy's right here, we're not going to see this situation where the Triceratops is on top of the T-Rex, even though the T-Rex is kind of in front of the Triceratops, uh, if you know what I mean. We can actually delete this sprite now, I think. Let's go ahead and do that. We only need the dino sprite, and that's awesome. That simplifies it so much. I was really tired of making a change and then thinking, oh, I need to make the change for the Triceratops. 
Now, okay, so the next thing is we added my type, but when the, when the clone starts, we need to set the right costume based on the type. Um, the other thing I want to do, no, sorry, no, let's not do that right now. Control, when I start as a clone, I, it's so strange. I thought I already had a block like that. But I'm looking around and I don't see a when I start as clone block. If, and we're going to need another if. I don't want to nest to these because if we end, like imagine, oh wait, no, we're not going to use an if statement. Sorry, I was going to say if type equals T-Rex, then select the T-Rex costume. There is a trick in Scratch. You can reference a costume with a variable. So we're actually going to go to looks and say switch costume to, and you see how this says T-Rex? Well, our my.type variable is going to be the word T-Rex. So we can put a variable right in there. Um, not in, oops, sorry, not info.type, my.type. Switch costume to my.type. And that will select either T-Rex or Triceratops. And you know what? Let's go ahead and initialize my selected to zero. So we're going to set, when I start as a clone, we cannot be selected. Let's just say that. So selected is going to be zero and switch costume to my type. Now the way we handle selected is right here. Switch costume to T-Rex selected. Or sorry, here, switch costume to T-Rex? No, switch costume to my type. But if we are selected, when the sprite is clicked, we're going to switch costume to my type dash selected. And there's an operator called join, which lets us do that. So we're going to say switch costume to join. And then we want my type right there. And dash selected. See that? So if my type is T-Rex, then it's going to be T-Rex dash selected, and it's going to switch to that costume name. Let's see what happens. Right now, something weird is going to happen. Okay, so we switched to the wrong costume because look at dino my type is zero. We're not initializing that at all. Um, how are we going to initialize it? Well, at the start of the game, we need to set my type to something. And for now, we're going to make a clone. We're going to go back to one T-Rex and one Triceratops by having a type. My, set my type to T-Rex and make a clone. Create clone of myself. Hey, wait a minute. What's in this list? Oh, look at that. You can clone other sprites? Look at that. I've never actually opened that menu before. That's interesting. So I wonder how we can use that. You can use one thing to create a clone of something else. Like That means in our hatchery, when we click this incubate right here, we could actually make that button clone the dino, but is that a good idea? I kind of prefer using a message, but I'm not sure. We'll, we'll really, we'll need to think about that. So anyway, when green flag is clicked, we're gonna set these variables, make a clone. Now we've got a dino running around, uh, a T-Rex running around. Then we're gonna set those variables again. What's our T-Rex tricky? Tricky T-Rex, I kind of, or Tricky Triceratops, I kind of like that name. Triceratops, or was it Spiky? Oh, I don't remember. Um, and then we're going to create a clone. The other thing is, I think I mentioned this before, I want to keep the master dino as just a hidden template. So we're going to actually hide ourselves 
we do not want to be visible on the screen. We're, we're invisible because it's just the source template for all the other dinos. And that means when, whoa, look at this. We already have this clone, this block too. Let's get rid of that. Um, when I start as a clone, let's bring that down here. This is initialization for the main sprite template, and this is initialization for each dino. Um, when I start as a clone, we're going to go to a random position like that. We're not selected. We switch costume, and finally we show ourselves. So what's this going to do? Ideally, let's predict. When I click this, it's going to create a T-Rex clone, then create a Triceratops clone. And so we should see, oh, look at that. Well, but why? Oh, OK. So here's what happened. When we start the game, this stage script, which is kind of like the main initialization script, um, broadcasts screen.show and deselect. Screen.show and deselect. Well, guess what? Screen.show tells the dino to, to show itself because we're, we're looking at the map. Um, wait, we're not, oh, set screen name. Okay, so we should, we need to make this a little more clear. I want the the parameter to be next to the broadcast because they're connected. We don't want to initialize stuff up here and then broadcast down here. That actually makes it confusing because I didn't see what screen was showing. Now I see screen name is map, and we want to show that screen. So guess what? This main dyno needs to know that it doesn't count. We don't want it to show up when we're showing the map. Where is our screen.show handler? Here it is. When I receive screen.show, if the screen name is map, show ourselves. Otherwise, hide. If it's info and we're selected, then update globals. Set info type to T-Rex. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're going to set it to my.type because that is our type now. We can't assume we're a T-Rex. Update type, okay, that looks good. I wonder if setting type should be part of update globals because info.type is a global. Let's do that. But this is, no, oh, I don't know. This is connected to this broadcast. So let's leave it. Let's leave it for now. Uh, what was I gonna say? Okay, so we don't want to show ourselves if we are the master sprite. So let's go ahead and create a um, my, because it's for this sprite only. Oh, yeah. My dot uh, clone, or should we call it clone ID or dino ID? Let's call it clone ID. And but what we're going to do is have a clone ID of zero, meaning that we're the original sprite. Everyone else is going to have a number that tells you what ID you are. That's going to be handy for other things too in the future. You want to be able to identify a specific clone, usually. So let's initialize some things here. We're going to set... Uh, my clone ID to one for the T-Rex. Two for the Triceratops. And then set it back to zero at the end because then that's just ourselves. Set my clone ID to zero. And then in the show script, the show screen show handler, if screen name is map, well, guess what? This whole handler needs to be wrapped in an if. Um, and we want to say, let's say if my clone ID is greater than zero. That's a way to do it. 
Oh, there's a plane flying overhead. I don't know if that's showing up on the video. There. If my clone ID is greater than zero, that means we're a clone. So we handle this message. And honestly, we actually want the same thing for take turn, don't we? We don't want the master uh, dino clone or the master dino template to to be messing around taking turns or fighting or doing any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and do that as well. We're going to wrap this whole take turn script. Oh, I could have just duplicated that right here. If my clone ID is greater than zero, um, what else? That's fine. That's fine. Oh, there's a bunch of scripts. Okay, so when the sprite clicked, we don't really need to worry about that because the master template is invisible. We have that hide statement, so it can't be clicked. Deselect, yeah, I guess that's fine. It doesn't hurt. Selected will never be one. We're never gonna update globals. We're, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, now this is perfect. This is the opposite. Do you remember what happened? I think it was in the last episode when we added the incubate button and the T-Rexes all cloned themselves. We ended up with, we started with three and then suddenly there were six T-Rexes. That's because each one gets this message and creates a clone. It's a clone of a clone. Now we can say, if we are the master dino, so if my clone ID is zero, not greater than zero, if we are the master dino, um, which means my clone ID equals zero, and let's hide that. We, we can hide these things. Oh, hold on a second. I just want to double check that these are all for this sprite only, which we can tell because it says dino colon, <clears throat> sorry, dino colon my type, dino colon my clone ID. So all these things that we have should start with dino colon. Otherwise, I've made a mistake. Oh, those are, oh, look at this. This is cool. We can change the view type here because we're not showing them directly anymore. So that's a good one. Let's get rid of clone ID. Let's get rid of name. My food is correct. My type is correct. Hatchery hatch type is, I guess, correct. Oh, wait, that's a global. My selected is correct. Good. Those are, go those are all good because they all started with the dino prefix. So when I receive hatchery hatch type, if my clone ID is zero, and now we can get rid of this. Look at that. The way we create a T-Rex is we set my type to hatchery hatch type and create a clone. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to, whoops, go to variables and set my dot type to hatchery hatch type and then create a clone. Look at that, isn't that nice? We're using the parameter to just set our own type and then when we start as a clone, remember, that's where the type comes in to switching to the costume. So if the type is T-Rex, then we're gonna switch to the T-Rex and it looks like we added, we incubated a T-Rex. Um, let's give this a try. If we click this, we've got one T-Rex, one Triceratops. Let's go to the hatchery, incubate, incubate. Look at that. We just got another T-Rex and he's frozen. That's not good. That's not good. And okay, here's why. Oh no. We need to set the clone ID to something other than zero because remember, we just wrapped this whole thing in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so this is not a good idea. We can't rely on, we, we wanna actually keep clone ID. We don't wanna set it to zero here. Instead, 
we're just going to change clone ID by one when we create a clone over here. Um, let's see. Whoops, sorry. Variables change clone ID by one. Set the type, create a clone. But that means we cannot rely on clone ID being zero because we need to keep track of it because we want to be able to say clone five, clone six, clone seven, however many clones there are, we need to keep track of that number. So let's just create a create a variable. Uh, my dot is clone for this sprite only. And here we're going to say if my dot is clone is zero, that means we are the master sprite. We're not a clone, we're the original. Oops. And um, over here in take turn, we want to say if my is clone is greater than zero, sure. Really, we should say equals one. Yeah, let's, let's change that. That's a little sloppy. I'm just going to use 0 and 1 for our flag. So let's actually use 0 or 1, not greater than. Would See, when you read code like that, it makes you question. You're like, wait a minute, greater than 0? Does that mean my dot is clone could be 2 or 1.5? Now we don't have to worry about it. We look at that and we say, oh, my dot is clone. Is means it's probably a Boolean. It means it can only be true or false. And one is generally true, zero is false. There are some languages where that is inverted, believe it or not, where true is zero and uh, false is one or anything non-zero, which is kind of nuts. So let's go back to this. We've got my clone ID is one, my clone ID is two, Um, so, okay, we instead we need to change is clone. Now, is clone will start off as zero anyway, but let's just put that in here and really initialize it. My dot is, whoa, my dot is clone is zero, but when I start as a clone, we're just going to change that. Oh man, this is so sloppy. Look at this. I want my set variables, my set blocks to be together. And really, going to a random position should maybe come after that. That way we keep the colors together. It looks a little nicer. So if we start as a clone, then is clone is one. Now things should work better. If we press start, uh, <laughs> uh, what did we forget? Okay, there it is. Screen.show is still using the clone ID. We are now switching to is clone. So let's delete that. Put that in. Try again. There we go. Now we only see two dinos. They're fighting. Let's go to the hatchery. Incubate. Incubate. Look, there's our T-Rex. Let's select him and see what he's doing. He's hunting? Why is he hunting? Oh, and he's standing still. You know why? Because we deleted the T-Rex. Let's see what happened here. Glide, or sorry, we deleted the Triceratops. Glide to Triceratops. There is no Triceratops. Why is that still saying Triceratops? You see that? Let's just go to random position instead so that he's moving around, and we'll have to fix that later. Things are going to get more complicated now, but we're doing it at a good time because the more dinos we add, the harder it would have been to combine everything and reconcile it and make sure it's still working, right? So we started off just using two dinos because conceptually that's simpler. We have the T-Rex and the Triceratops. 
Now we've combined them into a generic dyno, and whenever we add a behavior, we need to think about that type variable, my.type, and say, does this make sense for all dynos, or should it be a certain type? And it makes some things harder. We can't say glide to triceratops, right? Because triceratops is gone. And we can't say glide to dino, because that is only going to refer, that's not even in here. Oh, because yeah, we are the dino. So it's not even showing us the option to glide to ourselves. Um, so yeah, that's going to just be a little harder. We're going to have to think of something for, if I'm hunting, how do I find someone to hunt? Right? We could do something similar to the battle where we broadcast a message and then somebody, whoever's closest, responds and says, okay, I'm the closest dinosaur. Go ahead and try to hunt me. Right? And then our T-Rex knows where to glide because we'll set a global XY variable. Um, but we're not going to do that today. We successfully combined our dinosaurs. It's working and it's also fixed some of our issues with, you know, having to update code in multiple places. Um, we fixed some issues with clones. We have this button working really well. You incubate and it just creates another T-Rex. Look at that. That's awesome. And when we add another button for Triceratops here, we're, we can be pretty confident that that's going to work because the only difference now between a Triceratops and a T-Rex is this variable. So as long as, where is it, hatchery.hatch is setting type to uh, Triceratops, then we're going to become a Triceratops when we create a clone. That's awesome. That's going to be really cool. So I'm looking forward to doing that in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative and maybe interesting. And I'll see you next time. Bye.